what the heck is new weird? And also, if there is a new weird, is there then also an old weird? Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Angela and yeah, today, um, let's say the attempt to look at a subgenre of speculative fiction that's called new weird because i thought that would be a good way to kick off our perdido street station read along and yeah china mieville is always named as one of the founding fathers of yeah a subgenre that is called new weird and yes i posted some slightly flippant question in my intro well, if there is new weird, what about old weird? And yeah, there is actually something. Well, it's not called old weird, it's just called weird fiction, but that is the forerunner of the genre I want to have a look at today. And yeah, like a lot of our modern or contemporary um, subgenres of speculative fiction, um, new weird goes all the way back to, yeah, the middle of this. 18th century but then particular again at the end of the 19th century so let's start off by looking at one defining feature that weird fiction old and new shares and that's transgression transgression in the sense of transgressing genre boundaries um, for weird fiction in the late 19th century this mostly means a combination of elements from gothic fiction um, from early science fiction and also from horror but it also can mean transgression in the sense of transgressing moral or suicidal norms and this is mostly played out in yeah let's say the horror element of those stories so it can be like a body horror where we have um yeah very weird looking creatures um fusions of human bodies with um, bodies of other creatures or outright non-human races that then transgress the human norms so weird fiction in general is centered on the subconscious, the bizarre, the marginalized and the unexplained. But it doesn't do that to explain it or reconcile it away. But it does this first and foremost to highlight those aspects. And by highlighting them, yeah, making us aware of them, but also stressing the point that those more bizarre maybe sinister um, and yeah border transgressing elements are part and parcel of our human nature so let's look at some authors that have been classified under weird fiction so a literary movement from the late 19th century into the early 20s almost to mid 20s like 40s 50s of the 20th century and one of the um, names that is mentioned over and over again and an author that's seen as yeah one of the foremost um, exponents of weird fiction is Edgar Allan Poe um, Edgar Allan Poe um, yeah is almost single-handedly inventing what then will be called american gothic um he combines gothic elements with um horror um so kind of like a gothic horror stories that he's writing um and if we look at a story like his um short novella from 1839 the house of usher it's very obvious that it has gothic elements like this grand house um we have a nameless narrator by the way we'll never find out who is the narrator in this story who um visits a childhood friend and he visits this friend in um his house which is like one of those stately homes 
and discovers very very quickly that there are some really sinister goings on happening and yeah it's um it's apparent very quickly that the house itself is involved in the, those horror and supernatural elements that the story has and the difference to normal gothic literature that dates back to the middle of the 18th century where the big house or the castle is a staple yeah trope or element is that in the let's say normal gothic stories it's a backdrop it's part of the world building but it's just um yeah where the story takes place whereas in Poe's story the house itself gets a different layer a different quality that then goes more into this horror or supernatural area another big name of weird fiction of this era is hp lovecraft um who actually popularizes the term weird fiction in some of the essays he's published but also his own writing um, if we for example look at his Cthulhu stories we can find um, yeah those genre bending genre combining elements but we can also find this yeah body horror um, supernatural horror um, I think some of his stories have been classified as cosmic horror. Um, if we look at Cotolo himself, he's, yeah, this disastrous monster that has, yeah, bodily features that are seen as repulsive. Um, his head or face is squid like. Um, he has tentacles. Um, and this will kind of like be transported then also into. Um, what we know as new weird, especially China Mieville has said um, in some context that, yeah, the best way to convey horror is to give something tentacles, um, to make it, yeah, repulsive, slippery, a little bit meh. And, um, yeah, I think he demonstrates this also then with his own writing in the novel Kraken, for example, not the... Uh, title of that novel is already a program in itself so yeah now this is an element that they are transported into new weird um, other authors would be the welsh author arthur mecken um, again we find yeah a godlike creature invading the welsh countryside in his story the great god pan but we do not just find um, weird stories or weird fiction in English-speaking countries like America and Britain, but we can find them actually worldwide. We have, for example, the um, German writing author Franz Kafka, um, who lived in what at the time was still part of the bohemian kingdom in prague um, and yeah in his stories we also find this type of body horror um, if we look at a story like the metamorphosis die verwandlung um, where a guy literally turns into a cockroach like insect um, and yeah we get quite disgusting descriptions how for example his eating habits change um, that he then, yeah, prefers not human food anymore, but eats more stuff that's like garbage. Um, again, a feature that Mievel picks up in his very, very first novel, King Red, where there are some really disgusting scenes when it comes to food and eating. Another author is Alfred Kubin with his novel Die Andere Seite, The Other Side where we have a whole city that kind of like gets um, really weird in parts um, where things are not working the way they normally work in a city and we can also go outside of europe like the nigerian author amos tutuola and his novel the palm wine drinker have been classified as weird fiction because again um, it has surrealistic elements it has some really 
weird types of humor that are centered around the body around bodily features um and yeah it has um, slightly supernatural features as well so i already um yeah have had hinted at that this is the forerunner of new weird um, a genre that starts to emerge in the mid to late 1990s and then has its let's say heyday yeah in the early 2000s but we kind of like still find authors that write in this genre and that try to let's say incorporate elements of what then will be grouped as new weird so let's try and well, at least have an attempt of a definition because it will become very quickly apparent that new weird is very hard to define and why this might be the case new weird and the weird fiction from the 19th century um, share this idea of genre non-conformity so new weird as well tries to combine several genres but that's also the feature that makes it very hard to come up with a definition because what do you do with writing that basically has its tentacled fingers in every genre pie that's out there and happily pilfers from it and has as its yeah defining feature and basically central idea that it doesn't want to be put into any of those genre boxes so what is one to do with that um and Shaina Mievel actually he commented on this yeah fluidity of new weird writing by stating new weird is a moment a suggestion a tease an intervention an attitude above all an argument you cannot read off a checklist and say x is in y is out and think you understand what is at stake or what's being argued and yes that's not very helpful if we don't know even what elements are in or what elements are out um, so yeah what are we supposed to do with that um china Meville also very famously said that he wants to write a book in every genre and well he's doing quite well with that approach because yeah each of his books is let's say centered around a genre but not really fulfilling all the genre criteria and also mixing in other bits and pieces um, if we look at his very first novel um, it's a portal fantasy with kind of like yeah very heavy gothic elements not king red um, but he's also done space opera with embassy town he's done detective noir with the city the city um, and Perdido Street Station is sometimes classified as steampunk, but it's not really steampunk either. So you get the idea what those authors are trying to do. No? They're very irreverent when it comes to genre definitions and genre boundaries. Now, as I say, this doesn't get us really very far. So another prominent um, author that is classified as new weird jeff vandermeer tried a little bit a different approach how to define this genre for a better word um, and he decided to focus more on world building so jeff vandermeer and his um, wife anne they edited an anthology with the title the new weird and in the foreword he tries out this idea of let's use world building as a definition so according to this new weird is a type of urban secondary world fiction that subverts the romanticized idea about place found in traditional fantasy largely choosing realistic complex real world models as the jumping off point for creation of settings that may combine elements of both science fiction and fantasy so according to this then yeah new weird is closely linked to urban fantasy it has urban settings 
We see this very strongly actually in China Mievel. I think almost all his books have a city in some way or form. Um, but Jeff Vandermeer himself goes a little bit a different route by um, sub even subverting this again. No? And really, yeah, this idea that he proposes himself, that it's going against a romanticized sense of place. Because if we look at his Southern Reach trilogy, um, the main feature of this is, again, it's a portal fantasy, but the area we're going to, Area X, is actually almost this romanticized place because it's non-polluted. There's no environmental pollution whatsoever. It's this pristine place of nature. And at the same time, it's oh so sinister because that's where people, like anybody who entered Area X, didn't come back. And the few who eventually make it back are altered and very disturbed in many, many ways. And also this supposedly pristine landscape has, again, yeah, literally geologically inverted features. Like there is this lighthouse um, structure um, where things go up, but there's also like a tunnel system that goes down. And it's actually described that the um, tunnel mirrors the lighthouse as a feature, a geological feature of this landscape. But again, it's very fuzzy, no? Where is then the cutoff point between new weird and, for example, urban fantasy? Is there a cutoff point? Is it even desired by the authors who write in this genre new weird? And I think Jeff Vandermeer was aware of this himself a little bit. In an article for The Atlantic with the title The Uncanny Power of Weird Fiction, he proposes a different way of defining what is weird fiction and then also what is new weird. Um, and he tries to combine this idea of that new weird is genre-defying that it's centered on aspects of world building that, well, prefer an urban setting um, with the idea that it also transports, yeah, a worldview that is centered around our idea that we can actually understand the universe and understand our world. And he expresses this in this article in the following way. We like to think that we understand our universe, but I came away from these readings with a sense of weird fiction as a potentially powerful way in which to find the distance and the universality to grapple with the negation of that idea. There are so many contradictions in who we are now as human beings, immersed in a culture of modern technology and progress that still rates as primitive in the context of, for example, the way plants use quantum mechanics during photosynthesis. So this quote makes clear several aspects of what Vandermeer thinks that weird fiction should transport. One is that it negates our idea that we can actually explain the universe. And he thinks that weird fiction should play out the struggle, how we come to grips with this idea, that our science cannot explain everything, that our science is only able to give us a fraction of knowledge about who we are ourselves and how the world we inhabit works. And he thinks that, yeah, coming to grips with this is a very humbling experience. Experience. Here, in what is actually our infancy of understanding the world, this era in which we think we are older than we are, it is cathartic to seek out and tell stories that do not seek to reconcile the illogical, the contradictory and often instinctual way in which human beings perceive the world, but instead accentuate these elements in a way of showing us as we truly are unruly, unruled, superstitious, 
absurd, subject to a thousand destabilizing fears and hopes. According to this, at the core of the new weird writing is this idea that human beings are not, well, the crown of creation or always in control of their environment or even in control of their emotions, but that we're unruly, that we're absurd, and that coming to that insight will give us, yeah, a, not just a better, but maybe a truer idea of what human beings and human nature actually is. And yes, this kind like, yeah, insight he describes as humbling. Such a reading experience is humbling. It humbles you as a human being, but also as a writer. It tends to strip from you any impulse that does not lead to what seems essential. It makes you not want to aspire to be good or to be great, but to be true in some small way. To be true to the underpinnings of the world and the struggle to understand that world. This impulse is tempered by the recognition that we can never know all of it, or even most of it, and that this seeming lack is not a failing, but a strength. In this article, Vandermeer puts at the center of his definition what weird fiction and new weird fiction is, yeah, the idea that it centers around a worldview that sees humans as imperfect, as unable to explain the universe, and sees this as a necessary, cathartic and humbling insight. And that makes um, New Weird also a fiction that's not primarily there to explain the world, that it's not there to add another explanation of how the world or humans work, but is more a literature of showing, of showing us, yeah, our hidden, dark, unexplained, absurd, unruly sides and aspects. And this is probably what this category mostly is. It's a label. It's a label that then serves as a shorthand to this collection of elements that I have listed here in this video um, by well, looking at quotes from different people that have tried to define this yeah, subgenre of speculative fiction. So as always, thank you for watching. Um, happy reading, new weird or any other type of fiction and all the best.